dude, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You think uh, we can eat all this? This looks terrible. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look appetizing whatsoever. You know? Nope. If you can, if you can stomach your way through it, uh, I okay. ask you to. And I think this is our both both of our first meal for the day, right? First meal yeah. of the day, first and indeed, one meal. Yeah. indeed. Let's do this. Let's do this. So for this. anybody that doesn't know, this is my good friend Billy Bosch, owner, founder, CEO, multi chime entrepreneur, real estate investor, just all around kind of business mogul. You might know him best from Iconic Protein mm. and supplements. Uh, Billy will tell you more about that, but really today we're going to talk about things business-wise, the struggles of entrepreneurship, the ups and downs from being a successful one like Billy has, especially with having raised multiple funds and capital uh, for various ventures, and to talk about wellness, to talk about nutrition, to talk about the industry and what he thinks about it, how it's going home and where he sees it going while we enjoy some meat. Mm. And this is the direction it's going, right? I hope so. I, I know so. I've seen the pendulum swing from getting in the industry 12 years ago to everything go plant-based, be vegan. Well, let, let's start with the original swing, which was equally unhealthy. A ton of processed food, you know, eating McDonald's, eating Pop-Tarts, all the stuff we grew up on that we love. Here's the food pyramid. You should follow this. Don't eat any fat though. Very bad. Now everybody's got dementia. Right? Yep. You deprive the fatty just organ in your body with, with fat. Ansel Keys. Right? So now we see the, you know, we saw the pendulum swing from that over to, oh, it's super healthy to just eat plants and be a vegan. And so we've all kind of probably tried that or heard about it at least or watched a documentary. Maybe eat less meat, this. eat, more eat less meat, eat more veggies. And now the pendulum is swinging back the other way, which is in this carnivore direction. And I don't know that everybody lands eating carnivore, but I do think that they eat more meat consciously and maybe they have like vegetables or plants consciously, right? It's somewhere in the middle is where the, the pendulum lands. But I think, you know, I would love to see everybody eating like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy. Mm -hmm. my, my delve into that world and the back and forth was always about like empathy and understanding. And to be honest, like, why I was a vegan for over a year, a vegetarian for over a year, was the girls I was dating. Literally, girlfriends. Really? You know, it kept the civil, it kept the house civil. And like, I was like, sure, I'll try that. Oh. Uh, almond milk, this milk, whatever. I don't eat this, don't eat that. Why not? Yeah, sure, honey. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, but you can't deny feelings, mm -hmm. actual feelings. Yeah. Because that's the truest understanding. So like when you have a belief or a conviction to something, it's one thing. But you know, one of the hardest things I think we deal with as human beings is trying to convince our minds mm. of something that our hearts know to be a lie. Right. And if you're eating a certain way and feeling a certain way, that feeling is the understanding. And so for me, ever since I've started on the venture of animal based and carnivore, now lion, for the last three years, that feeling continues to be there. And I'm like, I can't deny the feeling. And that's why yeah. I always say about the scientists testing the hypothesis, constantly trying to disprove it because I can't disprove it. I don't want this to be the truth. I don't want to think that food is that powerful. It is that important. It is that much of a determinant in how I feel, how I sleep, how I move, how I think, if I'm depressed or not, if I'm excited or not, if I'm motivated or not, if I'm yeah. able to be attractive or not. Yeah. But I keep finding that to be the case. It makes such a huge difference. You know, when you think about, you know, I've been thinking a lot about like lifespan versus health span. And we, we, you know, in the conversation today, went to the farmer's market and we're just chatting up, catching up on life. And I think we both have this, this scenario of like testing different diets and foods on our body and figuring out that it really does impact how you think, how you sleep, how you view the world, all this stuff, you know, and food can be like a drug, you know, especially if you're eating processed sugars and all this kind of stuff. It's like, we've all battled that. Uh, I think the challenge is, and we're still trying to figure it out, is how do you get over that hump, right? Because I still see a pile of gelato, and I'm like, give me a spoon. I'm mm. going to eat all this mm. gelato, yeah. right? Yeah. And it, 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 I don't know that I'll ever get over that. But, I mean, what's your take on that? Like, how do you, how do, how do you, I mean, I know you're, you're doing this right now to figure out, okay, am I going to be less susceptible to this, right? How are you feeling? What are you, 30 days in? 
I'm only a few days in? Only a few days into this okay. again. Okay. So what Billy's talking about, I recently did 66, 66 days of strict carnivore OMAD, one meal a day. Finished that in the beginning of January. And now I've recently taken a stab at the lion diet, which is ruminant animals only, salt and water. So basically meat, salt and water. I'm going to do it for 100 days, also one meal a day. I started February 1st, okay. but I cracked on Super Bowl Sunday. Oh. And just oh. restarted, and say it's day six. Okay. What was the crack? Because that's the fun part. That's what mm -hmm. we all want to know. Pizza. Okay. Ice cream and cookies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like my usual suspects. Mm. So what we were talking about earlier is like, is it that I'm addicted to sugar or trying to sever a sugar addiction? Sure. Because I think we all are. Right. Everyone in the Western world, anyone that has means or lives in any form of abundance is addicted to sugar. I'm a firm believer. Yet mm. there's no Sugar Addicts Anonymous. Mm. It doesn't exist. So <clears throat> what are we left to do? How do we fend for ourselves in something that doesn't have a, a stigma attached to it? We're pretty much alone. So for me, I'm trying to decide if I have an emotional attachment to these things, if I have a physical or like a you know, biological or a metaphysiological attachment to where it's, it's chemically induced somehow and I'm void of that and I'm trying to replenish it, or am I really trying to reconnect with a memory right. or cope <clears throat> somehow? Because it's always that same, like I said, repetitive circle of usual suspects. Mm. Why is it always these, you know, cookies, ice cream, pizza, cookies, ice cream, pizza? It's never like other stuff. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of emotional attachment to it. Yeah. But also for me, having been a, a drug user and gotten clean, I still seek out those feelings of like incapacitation mm. and find that when I over consume, like binge on highly processed foods and refined carbohydrates, I can get to that same state. So even though I've been clean for years, still when I get into those binges and I start to feel that state coming on, I almost become ravenous because yeah. I'm like going for that state of like, well, I'm not using the drugs anymore, but I can at least still feel the way that I used to feel. And there's like a comfort in that. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. But that's the truth of it. So like right now with the lion, my cravings are suppressed because of what I'm eating or rather what I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. But still the emotional attachment, the voids of that or comfort are still there. And that's what I'm battling with. So knowing that I'm not hungry because I'm literally full. Right. And then having my mind say, we want this, we want this. I'm like, why? We're not hungry. Yeah. Why do you want it? Why are we doing it? Why are we doing it? You know? And that's where like the, the real trial and error and like hypothesis for me testing comes from. It's so true about, you know, kind of these, these benders. Now, the, the crazy thing about sugar is like, you can have a little bit and you think, okay, I'll have my little bit of sugar. But then that just, it's like, the gateway to more and you're like maybe i'll have a little bit more and then your brain's just like fire and it's go 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 give me more give me more give oh, me yeah. more oh yeah and we've all been there where like you know what i'll have a bite of ice cream you know what i'll finish yours and i'll finish this one too and <laughs> i'll just crush all this ice cream um and it's hard man it's hard not to but then you feel that regret once you eat it all and you're there and you're just like lethargic and you feel sick and oh I, I shouldn't have done this so it's a reminder totally but in the moment it's hard not to it's near impossible. Like, I was laughing. I was with um, Phil Gray, a couple, yeah, couple yeah. of boys uh, a few weeks ago in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. We were talking about food and binges and whatnot. A pint of ice cream. Yeah. A pint of ice cream to me is a single serving. <laughs> Agreed. I can't tell you when I've ever bought a pint of ice cream. Yeah. Like, All right. Yeah. Three or four spoonfuls. Put it back. Put it no in the freezer. I'll get it back on Thursday. I'm like. I might as well buy like five pints because yeah. there's going to be one per night. Right. You know? So, I don't know. Again, is it an addiction to the substance or is it trying to recreate a memory? You know, hold on to a memory? Maybe something from childhood? Like, we all grew up on that, right? We, we all grew up, up on, on processed that. foods, ice cream, getting ice cream after dinner every night, having Pop Tarts, having little Debbie cakes, all the stuff. Pancakes, man. banana, pan I mean, pancakes. waffles. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, 
we should go through like a daily diet now, side by side analysis versus daily diet when you're like ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I had a, airheads, like all these things. I had a call yesterday with a um, our client coming on, asking him about exactly that. Mm -hmm. How did you grow up eating? Give me, you know, progress through your teens, yeah, twenties into your thirties, right? And then what have you been eating the last like seventy two hours? And it was basically verbatim like the standard American diet of like sixty to seventy percent coming from refined carbohydrates and processed food. So lots of wheat, lots of gluten, lots of grain. You know, breaded this, chicken sandwich that, um, toaster strudels. I mean, he, toaster you know, strudels. He, he named yeah. all the the labels all the stuff, of the, right? the sausage bread breakfast biscuits from X Y Z company. And it seemed normal. It seemed, it seemed totally normal, normal going cereal. up. This is what they have in the store. Yep, makes sense. That's what have it in the morning eating. before school. Yep, like done. And I was just like, wow, like he is one of millions to live up to that statistic, you know. And we wonder why we feel the way we do, because I say to everyone, the single most effective thing we can do in regards to our health is controlling what we put into our mouths. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard to believe that. And it's hard for me to believe that. Like, yeah. that's why I say I struggle. That's where I struggle the most with wanting to eat other things and, and the sugars and, and carbs mm -hmm. is because I don't want to believe this. Right. Like, don't tell me just eat steak, just drink water, mm -hmm. and you're going to feel fucking great all the time. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want that Doesn't to be it? the case. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I'm going to eat chocolate and have ice cream and whatever else. Like, there's nothing wrong in those things. It's not like they're malicious and, and evil. Right. But for me, at least, what they do to me is hard for me to ignore. So how, how does someone like yourself build you know, a business, create a foothold, get a foothold into an industry that's already very saturated mm -hmm. amidst a consumer group that's maybe not into you, maybe they're kind of unsure of who you are, Right. How do you educate them while at the same time providing something that's uh, good quality um, in a place that's you know riddled with mm -hmm. not so much good quality? Funny you mentioned that because the company started in New Orleans, and you know when I started sampling this protein shake called Iconic, people would say, "What kind of alcohol does this mix well with?" <laughs> New Orleans, <laughs> right? Amazing, New Orleans, right? Amazing. And they're over here buying the king cakes, you know. And Amazing. wondering like what's gonna pair well with their king cake. Amazing. And wow, you know that's, and that's so New Orleans. It's very New Orleans, right? God. And uh and so it was this is so good by the way, right? The bone marrow? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> and and what I realized was that if you make something that actually taste good and communicate it in a simple way, people will give it a shot. There's this perception that if you make, you know, a, a nutritious product, it's gonna taste horrible. Mm. Case in point here. Oh, I can eat this and this is healthy? Yes, it is. Okay, great. I'll eat this. But like people have this perception that to be healthy, it's going to taste bad. Right. I, if I want to be healthy, I have to sacrifice taste. And I said, let me let me get over that hurdle, right? Let me show people that, that that doesn't have to be the case. And that's how we started winning a lot of customers. You know, we've been, you know, on market for over 10 years now. And people are still surprised that our drinks actually taste good and our powders actually taste good. And I always say, look, it's better to just eat whole foods, eat like this, but most people they're not going to be they're not going to do that all the time right? right 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 so we want to be the easy button when you know that's what i thought you know how how can i communicate to people in new orleans because if i can win in new orleans you i can win anywhere right? right right so i thought might as well start here figure out how to get you know unhealthy people to do one thing healthy in their day and then i'll mass communicate that got it yeah that's very smart yeah and Thanks, simple man. yeah simple right yeah. Doesn't mean that it was easy. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. But the idea is simple. Yeah. And true, like you said, like an easy button because, you know, yes, you can always prepare and bring food with you and order ahead of time. And, mm -hmm. But the feasibility or rather the, the reality of that is not everybody's going to do that. No, they're not. You know, or things happen. No. They're very, and I say this as like being an avid seasoned traveler with preparing foods and meal prep and mm -hmm. doing it all, yeah. living that, of course. But most people are not gonna do that. So to have something that's readily available, easily accessible, mm. 
of quality, yeah, I'd say has value to it. it makes Ten sense. years, man, that's crazy. Long time. And I've learned a lot about you know the not just the nutrition space, but you know uh, how to make foods, um, you know how to sell into places like Whole Foods, and how to sell online and all that. So that's been the big you know skill set pickup and the big uh, benefit was like not only figuring out how to grow a business, but how to kind of like live a healthy life along the way. Cause it's easy to get caught up. I mean, yeah. you've got a business, I've got a business. It's easy to just be like, I just need to work. I just gotta wake up, I gotta work. I don't have time for this, I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to eat healthy. I'm gonna do Uber Eats. I just gotta crush work. And I'm not saying never do that, but I'm just saying like the longevity the health span part of longevity is actually making sure that you commit to taking care of your body every day, whether it's the food you put in or doing some meditation or a workout or whatever, because that, that habit of doing it every day oh, yeah. is gonna create the health span, which is living a happy life longer. No one wants to be that 80 person, 90 year old person that's incapacitated, that doesn't know where they're at or who they are. You wanna be that age and have it with it, or I'd rather live not as long and be super healthy and active. With and quality of life. Yeah, quality of life, man. Totally, you know? I read um, a report a few weeks ago about how our life expectancy in the United States had actually not dropped that much in the last, like, 20 years. And I said, okay, like, that's not a testament of health because what's the quality of life like, mm. right? Where, that would be a better kind of si uh, signal to see, like, though our... Um, morality or mortality rate has, has shifted or our, you know, age, um, I can't think of the word right now, life expectancy has lessened. Life expectancy, yeah. What has the quality of life been for those last 20 years for most people? And I would say for most people, it's not good. Yeah, it's true, man. It's, uh, we've all had people in our family have things like dementia and, and things like this, and yep. it's, it's hard to see, you know, and super oh, yeah. good, man. This looks great. And recently I had a, uh, my last grandmother, surviving grandmother pass away and she's lived a great long life and all this stuff. And I didn't so realize, I yeah, man, thank you. It was, it was tough, but we kind of knew it was coming. She was starting to go mentally and physically. And I talked to her and, and, you know, she said, what are you up to? How's iconic? And I said, you know, we're, you know, the business is still growing, happy doing it, but I really want to get into the longevity space. And she's like, what does that mean? And I said, basically, you can live longer, healthier. She's like, how do you do that? Well, I said, a lot of it's lifestyle. It's how you eat, it's but educating people on that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you have to do that. You have to do that like <laughs> right. right now. Where was that? Where yeah, was where was that, that for I, me? I would have subscribed. Yeah, right. I would have been in. Right. So that was a big aha moment of, hey, this is what I need to get involved with, of sharing this knowledge, whether it's having extra protein in your diet or eating carnivore or working out or meditating or getting good sleep or having a good community around you and all these things lead to longer, you know, health span um, and happier lives, right? God, yeah, man. That's amazing to hear. How old was she? 86, yeah, so quite a while. It was a good run. Good run, man, you know, and honestly, she outlived a lot of people in my family and she was the one that would never stop cooking with animal fats. When people switched to margarine and all these crazy things, right? All these chemicals. She was like, no, why wouldn't I just cook with butter or right. lard? You know, she just had animal fat to cook with all the time. And, you know, God bless her, man. She, she just like kind of outlasted a yeah. lot of other people. Yeah. So a testament to this style of eating, right? And to testaments, you know, like with quality, um, I remember talking to you about sourcing mm -hmm. yeah. for your products and like the importance of, of the animals and like where mm. they come from and the grass and everything. Like mm -hmm. talking about was in uh, Wisconsin, Ireland. 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 Yeah, Ireland yeah. yeah, not a lot of people do that. I don't think. No, man, it's easy to just get corn-fed products in the U.S. Um, things like that. You can find grass-fed beef like we have today, but if you want to find it at scale for clean dairy products and things like that like Ireland and New Zealand are the big countries and the big producers around this because they never stopped letting the cows graze free. Like we're all like grass fed and they're like, what else are you feeding Normal? them? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh yeah, we feed them corn and soy because it's cheaper. How's the cow? <laughs> they're, they're eating soybeans? Why? <laughs> so yeah. when you see the grass fed lamb from New Zealand yeah. at Whole Foods and you're like, oh my God, it's from New Zealand, like it's exotic. It's like, 
it's not that it's exotic. It is imported, yes, but like it's the fact that there's more of it in supply in comparison to domestic. Yeah, they just never stopped eating the way we're supposed to eat and raising animals the way we're supposed to raise animals, right? Makes sense to me. So you go to Ireland. Yeah, go to Ireland, source everything there. I tell you what, grass-fed beef here is great. It's something about maybe the atmosphere there. <laughs> <laughs> they put a little grass-fed butter on top too. Uh huh. Oof, you can get some phenomenal I mean, it's meats. literally the healthiest grass on earth. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, it's so green. green. It's, it's so green. green. I'm like, what, are you guys using fertilizer? No, this is just how it grows here. Okay, all right. Um, but it's So the grass-fed beef is equally yeah. amazing. Incredible, incredible. I so, never thought of that, but it definitely makes sense. Yeah. And the we met some of the farmers, you know, it's all these family farms. Everything's tested for, you know, before when the milk is taken, um, from each of the farms before it goes into the main facility. They test it all to make sure there's like no impurities, make sure there's no uh, hormones or additives or antibiotics or any of this junk. And like if it if anything tests positive, then it gets kicked out. They have like a metal gate in front, uh, like if you're going to like, I don't know, prison, like the Federal Reserve or prison <laughs> or something, right? There's like a huge gate and the drivers have to sample everything and fingerprint and all this oh, stuff. Damn. It's super intense, man. Wow. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, having the integrity of your supply chain, absolutely critical. How and did, how did that, um, did that get compromised in the last few years? No, the supply chain has all been there. It's just been all communication. Lucky you. Yeah, I know. Right. We've had delays, right? Um, we've had some issues with that, but overall, uh, most of the supply chain issues have been in the U S where you know, people get sick at a plant, so they have a shutdown of the plant where we're making everything, something like that, you know? Wow. Yeah. So what is the, you know, what can you tell to other entrepreneurs out there about like the struggle and um, persistence and, you know, being afraid and that it's okay and that it's part of the job and, you know, just some notes. Yeah, like the struggle is real, the struggle is part of it. Sometimes the struggle is like over glorified and I was texting with a buddy last night. He's having some ups and, down with, with ups and downs with his company. And I said, how are you? And I specifically said, like, how are you? Like, I know the business is challenging, but how are you? And he responds and he says, well, you know, if we can get more funding, we can do this and we do this and I need to hire this person. And the whole couple paragraphs on the, on the business. This is like an entrepreneur myth, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just stuck and focused. I got to focus on my business first. Right. And then I just sent the same copy and paste, same question. How are you? And he goes, waits a while. I see the little three dots, three dots. And he says, not great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like marriage on the rocks. Oof. Um, just struggling to process all this mentally. But I think if I can get over this hurdle and get some stability in the business, I can get stability in my personal life. And that, that's, that's one of the fallacies in a way is that it, I can see in one, from one <clears throat> point of view, if you get stability in the business, then you can focus more on this, right? You have some mind space that, okay, I'm, I'm less stressed here, I can focus on this. Right. But in reality, when you own a business, you don't know what's gonna happen. It could, you could think it's stable, and then things go up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's like, the way I've looked at it, and it's taken me over 10 years to get here, is stoicism. And I say, mm. hey, listen, like, I gotta be totally stoic. I gotta say, things could go crash tomorrow, or go totally up, and I can still be in that moment and say, okay, this sucks, or all oh, this is great but I need to be calm and process this for my own mental health and I've got to prioritize myself first. I got to prioritize what's going in my body, like going to work out, hitting the cold plunge of the sauna in the morning, uh, finding some time to journal. These kind of things are critical for me to have that mental clarity to perform in the business. Right. Right, or else I'm sabotaging the business because at home, relationships a mess. At home, health is a mess. At home, I haven't seen my family in nine months or something, right? right? So like, if that's not in alignment with where you need to be to be here and healthy, then like the business is not gonna perform, right? It's a reflection of you. It is, it's totally a reflection of you. So that was a big learning for me is like, I've gotta make sure my health, mental health, sleep health, you know, eating, all this stuff is fully optimized in order for the business to, to see top performance. I had a friend um, the other day, same thing, I asked him, you know, hey man, what's going on, how you doing? Oh, you know, dude, same old, what did he say? He said three things, he said, um, work, 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 trying to get more clients, and 
you know, working on myself in the body or something like trying to get ripped, you know, trying to get lean, or yeah. said, trying to get lean like you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I waited to respond. And then I responded back. I was like, dude, you got that order backwards. Yeah. Cause he's an, he's an, he's a personal trainer. Oh. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, get attractive and you will attract, mm. you know, be attractive yourself. And that doesn't mean just how you look, but like your branding, your message, your embodiment of what you're trying to sell or exude yeah. well. needs to be it. You can't just appear to be, you have no. to become, right? Yeah. You have to be. Yeah. And like he kind of likes to go out a lot. He kind of still plays, plays in the sand and you know, has a good time. But like, if you're trying to be like an alpha elite in your business, you need to be fucking obsessed with it as far as in what you protrude, right? Like you can't be halfway and halfway out and if you're fucked up, yeah, your business is gonna reflect that. Totally, man. But so not to say that he was doing a bad thing, but I was like, dude, switch that order. Get yourself right, basically. Become, don't just appear to be, and then watch. You're not gonna have to attract, rather, it's gonna be attracted. Right, you know, it's like, gonna come into your life. Yeah. Right, like it's not so much about, like business, and relationships and or rather success happens to you happens for you yes there's part of it that's made and you create and you you, you know you yourself hold your own destiny but at the same time like by living like you said in alignment with your character and your principles and things that you know to be correct with your conscience i call it conscience congruence mm -hmm. that's when things come to you that's magnetism right that's being magnanimous and for anyone i think in any industry the product is relevant yeah it's about you, your story, and what you're, you know, putting off. Like, man, I want to work with this guy. I don't even know what yeah. he fucking sells. Yeah. Amen. No, it's true. A lot of people underestimate that. And it's like part of, in, part, part of like the thrill of entrepreneurship is realizing at a certain point, like the thrill is the ride. It's like when you're on that roller coaster and it's fun and you're like, you get to the end and you're like, oh wait, that was the fun part. It wasn't finishing the roller coaster. It was like, oh my God, this is crazy. When is it going to end? It's the, the actual ride itself. And I've heard it so many times. The like, journey. Enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride, <laughs> but it's not the destination. But like, it, it takes experience in it sometimes to really realize, okay, this is true. This is like, I need to go back and just soak this in. Being in the desert, like the alchemist. Mm -hmm. Being in the desert. Exactly. Don't focus on the pyramids, mm -hmm. right? But the suffering in the desert, mm -hmm. the, the confusion, the, am I going the right way? Is this gonna be worth it? Yeah. Like that, that's, that's the work, right? That instills the work. Totally true. Training for a marathon or a race. Mm -hmm. You cross the finish line, studying for a big test, you know, getting into school or graduating. That moment is, is amazing. Crossing mm -hmm. the line, getting the right grade, you know, getting the right girl, whatever. That moment's amazing, but like the pursuit, the mm. chase, the work, the sacrifice, the dedication, that's this, where you learn. This is where you learn. This is what you remember, is that whole process. Because this is what pushes you, you know? It's, it's not, you know, it's like this meal. It's like, this has been great, but I learned a lot more. Going to the farmer's market, <laughs> hanging out, talking yeah. about meat, talking about cooking meat, and now we're just done. Now is okay. We okay. We had a great meal, but it's like that whole process was the enjoyment. Yeah, this is this is like, you know, the climax of the right, whole right. time is okay. We finally get to have this delicious food, but it's it's really about if you can find a way to be more present in the ups and downs mm -hmm. and like be appreciative of them because it's that perspective of like the reason I can be excited about this is because I've had really crappy food before. Right? Right, right. And and it's that perspective that gives us that that joy. So and and when I'm having a maybe a not a not great, you know, prepared by Jake meal here <laughs> <laughs> um, then I'm like, okay, this sucks, but like it's okay. Sucky meals happen. Yeah. And I'm gonna have a great meal after this. Right. But that that perspective shift has probably been the healthiest thing that's ever happened to me. Oof. You know? Yeah. So not the money. Yeah. Not the celebrations, not the awards. No. The struggle. Yeah, yeah. Understanding the struggle is part of it and understanding to, to enjoy the struggle, but not wear it as a badge of honor. So many people wear it, oh man, got a business, it's hard. It's, okay, guess what man, life is hard. <laughs> I mean, like everybody's got struggles. So there's no reason why your struggle is better or more important than anybody else's. So right. acknowledging that 
And, and like when you see somebody like that's like rude or cuts us off in traffic or whatever, I'm just like, okay, man, Today. It, it, it happened, right? A lot in Miami. I'm like, look, maybe that person's having a bad day. Maybe they're just, you know, something's off for them, but they're not, they're not in alignment and they're not enjoying their journey, whatever's happening. And I'm okay with that. I'm not going to let it bother me, right? So how do you maintain that when you're really going through it? You know, like when, <laughs> when payables outweigh receivables. <laughs> Wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> when, when cogs, you know, outweigh revenue. Yeah. When, I mean, when all the numbers are just like against mm-hmm. you. Right? Yeah. And for month, sometimes after month, year, sometimes after year, like how yeah. do you, no, I'm, I believe in this. We're doing something right here. I know this is, I know I got something here. I know I have lightning in a bottle. Yeah. I just need time. Right. And I need more traction. Right. You know, how do you, how do you keep that? Cause like, those are great words. Yeah. I love it. But like, yeah. What about when there's a gun to your head, you know? Well, uh, unfortunately there's been many guns to my head <laughs> and, and I don't know if it's getting conditioned to that of, Hey, there's this crazy thing going on with the business right now. And you know, at, at first it was just like constant ups, ups and downs, you know, like I, I basically kind of lost a, a relationship early on to the business because I was just like, everything came second to the business. And I said, oh, you know, this is going on, but once we get through this problem, then this, this will be okay. Mm. And it was constantly putting out fires and being in the moment as a fire. Like if you've ever seen firefighters, very rarely are these guys like going crazy and like panicking and like, what do we do with the hoses? Right, right, oh, right. Every, everything's regimented, okay? They're, they're just like doing work. They're on a mission, they're going, they're focused, they're, they're moving fast, but they're not panicking. Right. And that's been the transition of like knowing that there's gonna be a lot of downs, probably more downs than ups. I need to be that person that's focused and that's in the moment and I'm centered. And I realize like, okay, like this moment shall pass, this too shall pass and I'll be in a better place from this and having some gratitude for those downs but realizing like, look, man, I'm learning from this. All this is great because it's gonna make, you know, the next chapter in the business or the next business that much stronger. It's gonna make me a healthier person because I know how to deal with like ultimate struggles. You know, I mentioned with real estate, um, we had a, a 35 unit apartment building burn down. Okay. Yeah. Like some guy smokes a cigarette inside, lights the mattress on fire, poof, there goes the building. Luckily no one's hurt, but you know, my mom texts me, hey, I think your building's on fire. And I said, Typo? What? Question mark? I'm going to call you on that one. Hey, yeah. mom, what, what's going on? Typo? Yeah, Question honey, mark? I got, a, I got a, uh, an update on my, I got this app and it gives me updates on the oh, news. God. Mom, that's great about the app. Can you tell me what you said? <laughs> yeah, this is your address, right? It is. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely on fire. It's like a five alarm fire or four alarm or something, right? I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so, oh, and gosh. turns out it was on fire. Again, luckily nobody injured, but yeah. like I could choose to panic in that situation and let it overtake me and have a total meltdown. What am I going to do? We could go bankrupt, blah, 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 blah. Right, right, right. But I said, you know what? Like, luckily let's be grateful. No one's hurt. Okay. Grateful one, grateful two, we have insurance. Grateful three, I even found out about it. <laughs> also grateful, I even have a building that could catch fire, no, no, no. right? So it was a moment of like, like I'm not happy it happened, but having that perspective shift creates mental clarity. It creates a, a better place of, of mental health. And we got through it. It sucked for like two years because we had construction, we had to deal with insurance, we had to deal with legal stuff because this guy set the place on fire, all these things. Right. Um, and it was painful financially, uh, and, and just mentally processing that. But I came out in a, in a better place because now I'm like, look, man, like, what are you going to do to my building? What are you going to burn it down? Already <laughs> happened. Already <laughs> happened. I know how to deal with that. So now I'm like, can't hurt me. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, like, you have the efficient process of how to deal with it. <laughs> I do. So I'm, I'm now like in a, in a happier place when those obstacles come because I'm like, look, man, this is and same thing with, you know, with business or personal life, any of this stuff that happens, like, Okay, bring it on. Like this is, I'll just learn from this. Abundance yeah. mindset, man. It is. It's abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. It's so funny. Like you're talking about the difficulties of the obstacles. Like one of my favorite stories of scientist Thomas Edison, mm-hmm. better the light bulb. Yeah. But he also had ten thousand failures before it happened. And like, talks about those. Yeah, <laughs> but he's like, he's like, what did you learn from me? It's like I learned ten thousand ways how not to do it. Yeah. Like. 
hey, you want to see uh, number 7,041? Here. You want to yeah. see number 3212? Yeah. Here. You want to yeah. see number 537? Here. Like right. all of those are graphs or all of those are methods of how not to do something. Yeah. Which is like, yes, the light bulb being created. Thank you. Amazing. But like all that work, yeah. all the knowledge gain, all the failures, all the struggles, all the crumbled papers and thrown mm -hmm. in the corner. Like, dude, that's where the magic was happening. Yeah. Right. Because otherwise he just has it goes, oh, that was easy. Yeah. And then how do you appreciate that? Right. Like the knowledge gained through the struggle. I think that's everything. It is. You know? Yeah. The obstacle is the way. It right? is. The it obstacle really is. is the way. It really is. Find something hard. And we all have friends that say, well, I would switch jobs, but that's going to be a harder job, but I got to do more work. Or I would start this company, but that's going to be hard. <laughs> or I would have more kids, but that would be hard. Right? <laughs> guess what, man? Like, that, the obstacle is the way. Like, this is, this is the path. Like, don't go make your life more difficult than it has to be. Billy, like, don't go to California. It's going to be hard. Don't go to New York. It's going to be hard. Don't go to Miami. It's going to be, don't start that company. Don't drop, you know, don't leave the corporate, world. like, hard, hard, hard. Jake, don't go to the Marines. It's going to be hard. Don't go to New York. It's going to be, like, if I stopped every time somebody said, don't do it, it's going to be hard, but I'd be nowhere. This is it, man. This, this is the fun thing. This, this is what gets you into that upper echelon of, of humanity of, hey, I, I tried things. Not that I'm better than people. It's that like, hey, I tried more things than most people because I'm willing to get out of my comfort zone more than most people, mm. right? And I get it. It's easy to do that. But like, and we've all made decisions based in fear. And the challenge every day is to not make decisions based in fear to get out and put yourself on camera and create content <laughs> and you know do interesting things and try new diets and and start new businesses because like at the end of the day I always think when I'm laying around dying when I'm 160 years old and and I'm active and I had just run like 10 longevity, miles longevity. I just I just run 10 miles that day and had a huge <laughs> steak and I'm laying around and I don't know I'm about to die of course but I'm about to die cuz maybe I have a heart attack or something or a comet hits us or whatever right and I'm thinking like, you know what? I am glad I did all that stuff. I'm not gonna think like, oh, I'm really glad I didn't try to start that business. Or I'm really glad I didn't go on that trip. I'm really like, very rarely does that happen. Yep. So it's about like leaving it all in the field and knowing that you'll be happier and stronger from that one day. I'm fucking Tim Grover right here, man. <laughs> it's like I'm talking about people asking the cost of the price or the cost of winning. Yeah. And he said, you think winning is expensive? You should see the price of regret. Ooh. I feel that like to me, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be afraid or hated for something that I am than to be loved for something that I'm not. Fair. Right. Fair. And I'm more afraid of being nothing than I am of being hurt. Yeah. So yeah, like the batter's box in the major leagues is like, it's intimidating because it's fucking hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I got to get it. But it's like, you got to get in there, man. Yeah. You know, and like to me, you're, you're going to regret not taking a swing or at least trying, at yeah. least standing in the box, you know, to know what it feels like. And like, I don't know. I just think it's cool to hear from a source or a seasoned person, even though I know you probably hear seasoned. You're like, dude, I'm not, you know, like it's humbling. We all know people that have done way more, right? It's <laughs> like, I got all these guys, advisors, and they've been in the industry, you know, 30 years or something. Right. And I'm like, I'm, I'm still a rookie here. I am 10 plus years in and, but there's always going to be somebody that has more experience. Yeah. So what's on the horizon for you? What's next? What, um, where do you see things going and what do you want to, you know, what impact do you want to make? Yeah. So for me, it's like, how can I leave the planet better than I found it? Where I'm at right now with that is, is human nutrition. And my theory is that if I can help people live healthier lives longer, then they will leave the planet in a better place. Hmm. Because if I say, Hey Jake, you're gonna die tomorrow. You're gonna be like, all right, let me focus on what I what I can do today to enjoy my last day. But if I'm like, hey, you're gonna die in 200 years, you're probably gonna do things like recycle <laughs> or <laughs> consume less or worry about global warming or whatever it may be because right. you're here for a while. You're gonna experience this. So it's like a subconscious drip campaign of, of it is sustainability. It is. it is. It is. That's 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 kind of my approach. Um, since humans are the the, the you know kind of the core issue here in a way, or our behavior, I should say, but we can also be the solution. Right. So, and, and I know that people can get more happiness out of longer, healthier lives. So it's more about like, okay, I started with a nutrition company, what's next? It's still con continuing to scale Iconic as a brand, but outside of that, it's c scaling the awareness, like you're doing with coaching, on everything that's related to living a healthier life. It's up here, it's what's happening in the body, it's what's going in your mouth, 
it's how you sleep at night, um, it's the relationships you have, you can go on and on, all these things. So figuring out a way to communicate that to people to help them live the longer, healthier life. Maybe it's supplements, maybe it's like, you know, uh, a book or some other guide on, on how to make it easier because it's all about like understanding the journey that different humans are on and how to help them. Because it, it maybe it's easier for us to say, oh yeah, just eat like this, you mm -hmm. know? But like for a lot of people, like they have a lot more to get over. They have trauma with food and trauma with the gym and whatever else. Like we all know the formula. The formula is like eat better, go to the gym, sweat, and like- Feel better, look better. Yeah, feel better, look better. But like people don't do it. Right. Right, you right. got 80% of the, the formula US. formula is simple. Yeah, 80% of the US simple. is is overweight, but they know most of them know the formula. So like that's the issue. Like if you can help people, get over that hurdle, if you can help resolve that issue, then I think that, in my hypothesis, is that people will live longer, healthier lives, and they will leave the planet in a better place than they found it. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's well thought out and well said. Thanks. Oh well, man, dude, this has been legit. Thanks what for what a lunch, over. man. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. Right? Yeah. Well, thanks again, dude. Appreciate it. This is great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. Woo. That's Yum, good, man. Eh? Super good. Thank you for cooking that. Yeah, dude.